In this guide, we will learn how to set up our local workstation to run and test challenges. We will fix a security bug, locally test it, and then push our changes to get a score for the challenge. We can run the challenges either in a container, on our workstation, or on your host, by which I mean your operating system, which can either be Windows, OS X, or Linux. In regards to Windows, we first need to set up an Ubuntu desktop virtual machine. You can find the guide on the Ubuntu site, which outlines how to run an Ubuntu desktop virtual machine using VirtualBox on Windows. Once you have set that up, we can continue. For Linux and OS X users, you don't need to do this, and you can follow along the instructions that are present in this guide. By running the challenges inside a container, all the required app dependencies are automatically given. However, if you decide to run the challenge on the host without the container, then you need to manually install those dependencies. They are given in the source code repository, and depending on the programming language, they differ. Now let's start the setup challenge. For Java, this is the setup.java challenge. The understanding being that you have already finished the introduction.java challenge. To run a challenge locally, we first need to set an SSH public key to our secdim account. And we also need three commands, git, make, and docker. Git and make have already been provided by default in majority of Linux and OS X distributions. If you look at the bash script that you're given over here, this bash script will run a setup that will go through this entire process, including adding an SSH key to your account. So copy this bash script open up your terminal, paste it, and execute it. Firstly, it will ask if you have already registered on SecDim. If you haven't, you can simply click on sign in and go through the registration process. Next, it will ask if you have already added your SSH public key. Normally, you will be told during the registration process on how to generate and set your SSH public key for your account. However, if you haven't added your SSH public key, you can press N and it will go through that process. If you have signed in using either GitHub or GitLab, you need to manually add your SSH public key. You can do so by simply going to your account settings, which you can find if you log into your account. Once there, you go to SSH key, add or update SSH key, where you'll find the basic instructions that allow you to generate your public SSH key. Otherwise, the bash script will do that for you. As you can see, the bash script generates your default SSH public key pair for you. But if you already have an existing one, it just uses that. <laughs> then it'll ask you for your SecDim username and password, which upon providing, it'll proceed to verify if the SSH connection works. Once that is done, it'll then proceed to install all the required tools. However, since I already have the required tools, it'll instantly check off everything. You can run this setup as many times as you want, since the script checks if you already have the tools or not. With this, my workstation is now ready to run challenges locally. Let's start the setup challenge. Click play, followed by let's do this. This will start the challenge and you'll be greeted with a pop-out, which you can always find by clicking on the clone button later. This pop-out shows you the SSH link. You can click copy to copy the link or press any of the buttons to open the code in your IDE of choice. Once you have copied it, head to terminal, you can do git clone followed by pasting the SSH that you're given. 
hit enter. And since our SSH key is already set, we have successfully managed to clone the repository locally. Then you can open your code in your IDE of choice, which in my case is Visual Studio. As you can see, the files given to me on the cloud ID have now also been made available on my local workstation. A few simple commands to remember. To build this application locally using the container, you can do make build. This will build the container image. The container image contains all the dependencies which are required for us to run the app. The application will be readied for us as it goes through the entire build process. So as you can see, our container is now ready. Next, there is the command make test. Make test essentially fires off the usability tests for this. These usability tests, as mentioned in a previous challenge, they exist to make sure that the application is working as intended and has not broken. We expect the tests to pass. And would you look at that? The usability tests and functionality has passed as we expected. Over the course of our debugging and testing, it's important to know that we don't break the app. The next important command to remember is make security tests. This will run the security tests that we already have in this challenge. The security test tests the repository that you have for the security vulnerability of the challenge. If it exists, then as you can see, it fails which is currently the case since we have not patched the security vulnerability ourselves. The last thing that we have to consider is the make run command. With make run, you will be able to run your application locally. As you can see, it says localhost 8080, which we can navigate to. And as this application is a simple web app that simply returns a parameter along with the hello. Now, before I dive into fixing the security bug, there's another command we should keep in mind. Every time we make changes to our application and save them, then the every time we run the make test, it is going to apply our changes into the Docker container and if necessary, rebuild the image before conducting the test. The same is done for security tests. This speeds up the debugging process for us since the image is rebuilt with your changes but reuses all of the files that haven't been changed. So your changes are applied directly. Another way of also applying or checking or testing your changes is via the make debug command. Make debug rebuilds your Docker if necessary and returns a shell. So you can run your commands directly inside the Docker instance over here. Another command that is worth noting is called the make push command. What this essentially does, which you can find if you head to the readme, is it does git add of all of your changes, git commit with the message security fix, and git push. So essentially, it pushes all of the changes you made to your repository, to your remote repository where the challenge is currently running. Now, doing make push will push all the changes of your code to the remote repository. This, as long as your auto test is enabled, will basically rebuild the Docker, run the usability test, push your changes. Once the usability tests have concluded, 
your changes will be pushed into a commit. And since we had auto test enabled, you can see that the tests kick off by themselves. A final pro tip is the make status command, which returns the status of your test along with your remaining time and any output that's made available into your terminal. This way you can track your progress without needing to switch to your browser. It is important to know that you need to have your browser page open for the server test to kick in. As mentioned, if you have auto test enabled, doing make push will run the test by themselves. However, if you do make push and you do not have auto test enabled, your changes will be shown as a commit that you can run a server test on. It is important to have this window open in order to be able to run the server test. As without testing these commits through here, you will not be able to receive a grade for your challenge and consequently won't be able to pass. Now with that, let's dive into the program itself. In the main file of the application.java, you will find that our formula is essentially returning hello with a name that is a parameter that is essentially the name parameter via a get request method. If we look at the application specification, it is the same as before, but the second one is a bit different. Where a parameter of name is set to Alice, it expect to return a string that contains Alice. So let's run and test it. We can head over and do make run which will start our web application. And then I can effectively communicate with it via curl or I can go to my web browser and navigate to localhost 8080 for the same effect. Now, if I provide a parameter name, you can observe that that name will essentially be returned in the response. Now, this is the time where you want to play around and consider about what are the possible things that could go wrong with this program. It is a common and trivial security bug. That means that we are provided with the security test. Essentially, the function over here is that Whatever is in the get request parameter under name, that is effectively being called back. So one would have to consider that while a normal user would enter things like names and numbers, a would-be hacker might enter something malicious like this. So as you can see, apparently the website called back whatever I set as the parameter response. This is in essence a very dangerous power as with JavaScript, the hacker can essentially compromise the user using a valid HTML context. Without going into further detail, this is essentially an example of a cross-site scripting attack as the would-be hacker can write arbitrary JavaScript functions and pass them using the context of a user. This way, the user can be tricked to give up their uh, personal information, their cookie information, or even be tricked into clicking a legitimate looking link that can be the stage for another attack. Our security test for this challenge is effectively a test for this. Instead of Alice, we have the script tag. One way to prevent cross-site scripting is to escape these dangerous HTML characters, which is what the security program expects to return. Then we try to run the security test. It'll fail as the program will not return the expected escape characters. 
there are a number of ways to fix this. We can write a simple mapping algorithm to map the value of whatever response we get to their escape equivalent. Or we can use an inbuilt function that returns the HTML safe sequence of the input. Fortunately for us, such a thing has been provided to us for this challenge. We are only allowed to use inbuilt dependencies. Using dependencies that are external is not allowed. They are often mentioned in a requirements.txt depending on what type of challenge it is. For our case, we may simply import the HTML utilities from the Spring Framework Web Utilities. After that, we will be able to have access to the HTML escape function. So we can simply use the HTML escape function over here, which allows us to sanitize the response coming in from the request parameter. Now that this is done, let's go and try making our security test again. As you can see, with our fix, we expected the security test to pass, and they did. Now, we also need to make sure our application is working properly, and we didn't break it. Fortunately for us, if we do the make push command, the usability test will fire off automatically, which allows us to essentially run the functionality test before committing our changes. Upon concluding the test, as you can see, functionality tests have passed, we managed to also finish our commit. Since auto test was disabled, we could do this manually. However, clicking auto test enabled, future tests and this test will be fired off automatically. As you can see, the test is now running. We can go back into our terminal and do make status which tells us about the time remaining and that the test is currently running, along with any test output that may have been made available at that time. Since there is none available yet, we can view it in real time on our challenge page. And if we make, make status again, you will see it shows that the test has passed along with our output. If we look at the web browser, it shows the same thing. Thanks to our security test, or rather our security fix, he managed to pass this challenge and we'll be awarded our score. And with that, security issue has been fixed and challenge has been won. Also, we could have run this challenge without the need of the Docker. You just have to make sure that you have the dependencies installed. And then you could run this project locally and build it as you may without having to worry. Should there be any dependencies, they would be mentioned in a requirements.txt file. But since this is Java, there is no such thing mentioned. Lastly, the fix that we implemented for this, this is known as output encoding. It is one of the fixes to address cross-site scripting attacks. However, this patch is not recommended for enterprise coding, as there are other more robust ways of addressing this problem, especially in larger code bases. That is not discussed here, as this fix is just a simple security vulnerability fix that is intended for the sake of the challenge and to give you a taste of finding and fixing a security bug.